Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Welcome to Tract and Truth Tuesday. That's the title we give to each and every one of our Tuesday broadcast. We call them Tract and Truth. Now, that word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T. We're talking about a gospel tract. And when we use the word truth, we're talking about the truth of the gospel as laid out in the Word of God. Each and every day we come to this time together with our Bibles open, and the other four days of the week we study through a book of the Bible. Typically, that's what we do, but on our Tuesday broadcast, we set aside our set Bible study to focus in and hone our skills in telling the gospel to people who do not know Christ as their Savior. And that's what we're going to do today. But right now, my Bible is sitting open to the Gospel of John, chapter 20. If you can, reach over, get your Bible, and turn there, John 20. I also have a gospel tract in my hand. I can't talk about tract and truth without talking about tracts. I'm going to talk about this one here in just a moment. But let me get us ready for Tract and Truth Tuesday uh, by leading into our study this way. You already know that this week is a very special week for all of us who belong to Jesus Christ. This week on Friday, we're going to remember the passion of Jesus Christ. His passion culminated in his crucifixion there on Calvary. Then on Sunday, we'll celebrate the bodily resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Beloved, you cannot be born again. You cannot be redeemed from your sin. You cannot be justified in God's sight. Those are all important Bible words. None of them can be true for you unless you believe in the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That's what Romans 10, 9, and 10 talks about. But friend, how in the world do we use this week leading up to Easter as a special time to share the gospel? I want to talk about that today. So get your Bible open to the book of John, Gospel of John, chapter 20. Get a piece of paper to write down an acrostic I'll give to you, but you'll have that paper handy for another reason I'll mention here in just a second. Before I read there in the Gospel of John, I want to encourage you to get some gospel tracts from us. I have one in my hand right now. This one's simply entitled, The Gift. The Gift. Now, a couple of weeks ago on Tract and Truth Tuesday, I talked about another track which really emphasizes the fact that Jesus arose from the dead. You haven't got time to get it before Sunday, but here's a great track you ought to get, The Gift. Now, friend, this is a track that would be wonderful for your local church to put into a visitor's packet so that when people come to visit your church, you can uh, give them the gospel. They can read it even if they think the pastor's sermon is boring or whatever. But this gospel track, The Gift, is so good for these reasons. Number one, the lettering in here is a little larger, so it's very short, very quick, very easy to read, very simple. But number two, It emphasizes two things. Number one, salvation is a gift from God, not of works lest any man should boast. But the other thing it emphasizes is the need of sinners. It emphasizes three key needs. Number one, forgiveness of sin. Number two, peace with God. Number three, eternal life. Forgiveness, peace with God, and eternal life are things that only Jesus can give He gives them as a gift when you and I receive him as Savior. This is a tremendous track. This is one of the tracks I used probably more than the vast majority of the tracks that we have. I have some tracks that I like more than others. You do. This one, The Gift, is one of my favorite. Please, let me send it to you. 
At the end of the broadcast, my announcer is going to come back on and give you some ways by which you can give to us your name and mailing address. Do that today, and we will send you a complete sample packet containing one each of all of our English tracks. This one, the gift, will be in there. Do that today. Let you and I become partners in the work of evangelism. Then when you get the track, pick out some that you really like better than the others. It's okay to have favorites. And then get more of them from us. We'll give them to you free. We've been doing that for 80 years. We'll give them to you for free. Let us become partners with you. Amen? Amen. If your Bible's open to the Gospel of John, beginning chapter 20, verse 1, the Bible says this, The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark under the sepulcher, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulcher. And she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved, that's John, and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher, and we know not where they have laid him. The next verses talk about how Peter and John run to the tomb. Then verse 5 says this, And he, stooping down, looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet he went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him, and went into the sepulcher, and seeth the linen clothes lie, and the napkin which was about the head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scriptures, that he must rise again from the dead. All right, my friend, how can we use this week leading up to Easter as a time to share the gospel? It is a unique week and a special time, a great time for us to be witnessing, because typically a lot of folk don't want to think about spiritual things very much, but many of them are thinking more about spiritual things because Easter is coming. They may not believe Jesus died on the cross. They may not believe the truth about Easter, but they're thinking because many people even go to church on Easter. But how do we get into the gospel here leading up in the week leading up to Easter? Here's what I do. Ask an unsaved friend or ask somebody, perhaps you're not sure if they're born again, ask them and just say, Say, hey, I'm taking kind of a a personal survey about what people think, different people think about Jesus and his resurrection. Ask them if they believe that Jesus really did die on the cross and that he arose three days later, as the Bible says. Now, when you ask them that, let them answer. Listen. Now, how they answer is not really the critical point here, but you've got to seriously listen. Ask them then why they believe the way that they do. Give them a chance to give their reasons. Now, even if they do say that they do believe that Jesus arose bodily from the dead, ask them why they believe that. Then when they get done, say this, can I tell you why I believe Jesus' resurrection is true? Now, if you've listened carefully, then the vast majority of time, they will give you a listening to as well. Now, here's what I use. I say to the person, I believe Jesus' resurrection is a fact, and I like to use the word fact as an acrostic. I take the letters to the word fact, F-A-C-T, and I use it as a memory tool for me. The letter F stands for foretold. The death and the resurrection of Messiah was foretold in the Old Testament. It was prophesied. Now, Psalm 16 is one of the places that it is foretold. Jesus even taught that he would die and rise from the dead. I don't have time, but turn over sometime to Mark chapters 8 and chapters 9. Jesus taught he would rise from the dead. So the letter F stands for foretold. The letter A stands for appearance. Appearances. Jesus appeared to a whole boatload of people after he arose from the dead. Now, this argument, by the way, forms a major point over in 1 Corinthians 15, which is often called the resurrection chapter. Jesus showed himself to people. People saw him. They touched him. He ate with them and so on. He appeared to people bodily and people touched him. The letter C stands for clothes. We read about that here in John chapter 20. The grave clothes were left in the tomb and people got to examine them. If Jesus' disciples had stolen the body, they would not have taken the time to remove the grave clothes. These clothes were there like like a deflated cocoon. 
I don't have the time to explain how his body was all wrapped up, but the clothes were not unwound. They were there just like an empty shell. Only his facial napkin was laying separately there. All right, the letter F stands for foretold. The letter A stands for appearances. The letter C stands for clothes. The letter T stands for transformed people. Transformed people. I would love to take the time, but I cannot, but sometime jot down and go look up Matthew 26, 11. In Matthew 26, 11, Jesus tells that Jesus there predicted how his disciples would be offended because of him on the night of his arrest and his crucifixion. By the way, that word offended there, it's a Greek word from which we get our English word scandalized. Jesus' shameful death at Calvary and the next day uh, events of his life found his disciples scandalized, hiding in fear. They were not expecting Jesus to rise from the dead. Do you remember the story of Jesus coming into the meeting place after his resurrection? There where his followers were. He came in without using the door. Remember the story? His appearance scared those guys half to death. Jesus had to actually eat some food there for the disciples to believe it wasn't a spirit. And, of course, old Downey Thomas, he wasn't there He had to come back a next time, and then Thomas got to put his fingers into the nail prints of Jesus' body. But man, oh man, what a change in the disciples. The book of Acts chapter 2 shows these once fearful men standing there boldly toe to toe in front of thousands of people preaching, guess what, the death burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. How were they so dramatically transformed? You know how? They had been with a risen Lord. After I walk through these four facts, I've actually got a fifth one, but for time's sake, I'll leave these four. After I walk through these facts, I then say this, because Jesus predicted his death and resurrection, and because it actually happened, as he said, then I can believe what Jesus said about why he went to the cross. He died on the cross as our substitute. The sinless man died for sinful men. And at that point, I just walk through the simple plan of salvation. Oh, my beloved friend, we have a great week to tell the gospel. It's Passion Week. Jesus died He has a passion for lost people. He'll give us some of his passion for lost people if we ask him. It's part of his grace. Friend, let's ask God to give us a heart for lost people, not just to pray for them. We've got to pray for them. Prayer is is the foundation's rock upon which our evangelism efforts are based. But praying doesn't give the gospel into the ear of a lost person. Why don't you get these tracks from us today? Get that piece of paper out. Get something to write with. My announcer is going to come back and give you our contact information. Let me send you those gospel tracks, and you're going to find out they're going to make your evangelism efforts that much more powerful. Do it today. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, You can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.